Good morning, everybody. Uh, can you hear me okay? Great, thanks. Uh, welcome to my talk, No Place Like Home, Real Estate OSINT and OPSEC Fails. I'm John Bollinger. I'm a CSO, CIO for a small software company. Uh, OSINT is one of my uh, favorite hobbies to kind of do after hours and whatnot. Uh, I've got about 20 years of experience in IT and security overall. Um, I worked to get a few uh, certifications to challenge myself, kind of like OSINT is always something that challenges me to find out what information is out there. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, my Twitter is the bowl 963 um, You can also see me on a couple of different chat channels uh, using that same name. Uh, quick disclaimer, the views and opinions expressed in this presentation are those of the presenter and not of any entity which the presenter has been, is now, or will be affiliated with. So now that that's out of the way, uh, quick warning. So we're going to delve into the world of OSINT. Uh, that's open source intelligence, which is the collection and analysis of information gathered from public and open sources. Uh, this presentation will contain two real-life stories, two real-life challenges uh, that uh, you might personally experience. Now, parts of this talk may appear to fall in the creepier side of OSINT. So if you're uh, in the real estate market and you go home one day or if you're selling your house, you may feel a little dirty after this. Uh, first, uh, we all partied last night. We had a great time with Offspring. Uh, so as I've seen many of you this morning, you have to have your coffee before you can start anything. All right, so let me give you some pretext here. Uh, so one of the things that I did was I set up uh, two challenges for myself. Uh, in challenge one, um, I said, what kind of information can I obtain if I was somebody trying to buy a house? Um, and what kind of information could I obtain from the people selling their houses? So in this case, I gave myself one day with two people, and I want to thank my lovely wife, Melissa, who couldn't make it today, but uh, she was uh, my cohort in this. I uh, tried to keep the agents off me while I kind of did some things, and then she uh, did the same uh, as well. Um, so during this talk, you're going to see a few OPSEC fails, uh, and at the end, we'll see a lot of lessons learned in uh, this process. So like any good investigation or any uh, pen test or uh, any recon work, you have to do your due diligence. You have to do your enumeration and your reconnaissance. So in this case, for this project, I use the popular websites of Zillow, Realtor.com, and Trulia. Now, these websites are known by many, and they have a wealth of uh, knowledge out there. And for some people, they don't realize how much information is actually on these websites. Um, I do want to give a shout out to Robert Burney. Uh, he did a great presentation at B-Sides Tampa 2018. Uh, he talked about how you can exploit the Zillow Z estimate system. Um, at that point in time, you could go onto the Zillow website and you could say you're the owner of a house, even though you, you're nowhere near that state. You, you have nothing to do with that property. Uh, you could also, um, uh, through constant changes in the system, you could modify the value of your property and values of properties around your house. Okay, Because uh, a lot of systems these days use Zillow as the main aggregator of information in the real estate market. So the first thing with this challenge here, um, I chose to use a house that was behind a gated community. Um, this community has a security guard, uh, has a guard shack, and uh, this gives uh, homeowners a false sense of security. So in this case, uh, it was an open house. Um, you're supposed to drive in the left lane and go see the guard, get the information about the property, and sign up, show your ID, and all this kind of fun information. Well, I chose to go on the right path. Uh, so even though they have these gates there, they left them wide open. And they put a little cone on the left one, so I use that as my justification. Hey, there's an orange cone blocking my way. I'm just not going to go that way. So I went the right side. I drove around. Actually, this is a nice uh, community. 
Uh, it's on a golf course. Um, the, a lot of these houses are in um, an area that is near one of the largest military bases. So you're going to see a lot of military references here uh, because they these houses are um, owned by military personnel, some some very high ranking ones as well. So in this house here, it's on this nice golf course. Um, you walk into this into this property, and the realtor is standing there, and she's like, "Do you have all your information? Do you have the packet?" And I'm like, "No." I'm like, "We're usually you guys have this for us." And she goes, "No, you're supposed to stop at the guard shack." and give them your ID and, and talk to them about it. And I go, no, they had some cone there. So I just drove off and just came directly here. I had no idea that I needed to do that. So she kind of laughed it off and just said, ah, go ahead, look around the house. If you have any questions, stop by. So I walked around the house. And for me, I try to depersonalize and I try to scrub as much information whenever I'm selling a house. So in this case here, we have a security panel that was open. I didn't open it. And it has all the details about what zone and what alarm is uh, referenced for that house. Um, so I don't like to give intruders or potential people uh, information about anything. So for me, if I was going to sell a house, I would make sure that was scrubbed. It was completely clear uh, and, and whited out. So as I went into the garage, um, this was a very meticulous person. Uh, and one of the things that I like to I like to look at as I'm doing these types of engagements is um, how much information about a profile can I create for this person um, or this family. So if I was to use it later on in an engagement, that would be helpful. So this person was very meticulous. Uh, they had a lot of information as far as um, their ammunition was fully stocked, ready to go. Um, they had gear set up with medical uh, packets. Uh, basically, they were ready to go to throw everything in a bag, get to the base, and deploy. Um, but everything was out and about, readily available. Anybody could have walked in, taken any of that, or just looked at it for their own information. Uh, the other thing that I saw was a lot of uh, ammunition and guns just lying around the house, um, which surprises me because a realtor usually tells you, please depersonalize, please clean up your house, please make sure there's nothing there that's going to make uh, a potential client uh, walk away. So in these cases, there was a lot of this. And then, of course, you have the usual things that you might see. You have routers just sitting there um, that are in an area where the realtor is not going to pay a lot of attention to you. Now, you're not going to have time to sit there and plug in and um, do a lot of things. But in this case, they were nice enough to actually have a note right on their wireless access point that says, hey, here's the SSID, here's the password, please have fun on my network. And again, some of these are high-ranking officials, and their laptops are still sitting there turned on on the network. So if you wanted to, you could gain access to their network. This, again, surprised me. Uh, I walked around uh, quite a few houses. Um, in total, I did about five houses. So all of these pictures, and there's a lot more pictures, but all of these things was out of five properties only um, in one afternoon. So here I found a lot of uh, official documents um, that you wouldn't want to be released um, to the Internet. Uh, now, I didn't go through anything. I treated this as a, a true home buyer just walking through, taking pictures of a house. Okay, uh, So I didn't dig through anything. I didn't open notebooks or anything like that, anything crazy. Now, this person here had this really sweet rig. I mean, it looked like they were set up for podcasting, gaming, or something along those lines. But they they did one major faux pas. They left their computer unlocked. Um, all you have to do, as you, as most of you have seen during this these last couple of days, is plug in a USB device, and you're up and running, and you have access to this network. So for me, it got even worse. Um, so I do a lot of... Uh, testing of my company's infrastructure. I, I make sure that uh, I do walkthroughs and 
make sure that they are protected if somebody was to walk through our office. So here we see that they had uh, badges just out and about. Um, they had security tokens just hanging from a door. Um, I actually saw in one, one such case where I found a network engineer, a security engineer for a well-known uh, open source uh, Linux distribution. His badge was just sitting there uh, ready, ready for the taking. Um, and I know this facility is pretty secure and I'm sure they wouldn't, uh, wouldn't like to have this badge out in the open for anybody to take. So uh, whenever I see these types of things, I always take them to the real estate agent and say, hey, can you please just put this away somewhere, secure it, uh, let the person, the homeowner know that uh, this isn't something that you want to leave out. You know, it's not a good security practice, especially for a security engineer. Uh, so lessons learned on this challenge. Uh, this challenge was fun. Um, again, uh, throughout the years of uh, purchasing houses, I've seen this a lot. So I know that this, this information is out there and very easy to get to. Um, so again, people have a false sense of safety in gated communities, which is, which is a shame. Um, they, they really believe that uh, the security guards are going to protect them from somebody coming in. They also have a false sense of um, security that their real estate agent is going to monitor and watch everybody walking through their house. But this isn't the case. Uh, real estate agents are too busy. Um, the truth of the matter is, in all of the houses that I looked at in this scenario, uh, we were typically the only two people in that house. And even in that case, I was able to freely walk around, take pictures and do whatever I wanted to without this agent following me, looking or doing anything about it. Um, they just, they didn't care. Um, and they, this was even the case when my wife was off walking around. The agent just stayed in the kitchen or stayed in the living room and just waited for somebody else to come along. Uh, the other thing is real estate agents like to talk. Uh, they really like to, to engage the people who are entering to build the house. Um, but sometimes uh, they give way too much information about their clientele. Uh, so I can give you an example of at one house, uh, the agent talked about the side business that this person had who owned the house. Uh, they talked about the, the endeavors that they're getting into. Uh, they also talked about, hey, they just came back from Italy. Uh, they were just on a two-week uh, venture in uh, Italy, and they spent a lot of time there, and they're going back uh, in a couple weeks. So that's great. Thank you for sharing all this information for me. Now, I know where these people have gone, where they're going, and when they're going. So uh, they like to talk, which is, which is very scary. Um, and again, they're focused on the sell. They're not focused on the security of the homeowner. They don't really care about that. They don't really think about it. It's not in their mindset. Um, it's not the mindset of these people to uh, secure the house. So again, any real, real estate agent will tell you to depersonalize your house. Make sure there's no pictures. Make sure there's nothing that shows that somebody lives here. Um, I like to tell people if you're selling a house, sanitize it. Make sure, yes, there are no pictures, there is no information, but there's no documents, there's no routers available, there's, there's nothing there. You're not leaving your badges out and about. Um, make sure that you're covering yourself, you're covering your company, you're covering whoever you work for. Alright, so challenge number two. This is more of a personal one. I'm building a garage. Um, so I gave myself one hour uh, for one person to see how much information I can get. Uh, that would be usable uh, for other information, for other uh, engagements. So I used public and county information that's readily available at your fingertips. And um, at the end of this, I'll talk briefly about uh, how you can leverage that information, what you can do with it. So one of my favorite systems to play with, um, which is sad, but it's true, is the geographic information system. So this, these websites have a ton of information out there. Um, it's not just for houses or personal property. You can get a ton of information about 
uh, businesses and future projects that are going on within the area. So we have a house here um, with the GIS system. You can see what what information is available. Who are your neighbors? Uh, how much is their house worth, um, etc. So uh, here we've got this house at 6100 Jordan Woods Drive. Uh, we know who the homeowner is. We know where they live. Um, we know what the property value is of the house. We can find out what the value of the house was prior to them buying the house. Now, the great thing about these GIS systems isn't just this pretty map. It's all the links that they give you to other information. Uh, so in this case here, it is a very quick link. You can get all the deed information. You can find out, hey, uh, what, what, who, who owns the property again? Uh, what is all the financial information and uh, just tons of information there in the deeds. You can get all the information about um, the, the zoning for the house and what have you. So there's just, it's amazing how much information is actually out there. Um, and they don't really scrub this, this information. They don't really look at what they're putting out there. They just throw these contracts in these documents. They don't care what was written on it or what have you. Another thing that you find is uh, account information. So what is the summary the, of this house? Are they paying their taxes on time? How much are the taxes for this property? Um, you know, who, who really owns the property? So a lot of times when I was looking up houses, I would find that the homeowner actually doesn't live at that residence. They live in another state. So you could see that they don't live there they're either using it as a summer home or winter home or they're using it as an Airbnb, which is very popular these days. So as I was digging around this particular house, and again, this is all the same house. This is every single picture here was the same exact house. I found a link and it's a nice little link that said metadata. And we all know that there's tons of information out there in metadata and that's where you really want to go play. Uh, so here it it pointed me to an anonymous FTP site. Uh, this FTP site had thousands and thousands of files and folders on it and no security. Well, there are, were some folders that were secure, but those folders actually didn't look very interesting anyway. But the other ones, they did. Um, so they actually had directories out there that were the VPN configuration for uh, their, their software. Uh, they had tons of zip files, Excel documents, uh, access database files, PowerPoint presentations. Um, and, you know, you could see from one of these Excel documents every single house that was sold in this county for the last 10 years. Uh, you could see every single permit that was put in and all the work that was done for these houses. Uh, you got the homeowner's names. You got, sometimes you got dates of birth. I mean, there was a, a ton of information just sitting there in a public FTP website. And this isn't uncommon. You'll find other, other counties and states that have the same thing. They just look at it as this is all public information. This is all readily available for anybody. So another one that I found was the permitting system. Now, some permits uh, systems for counties require you to have an account uh, and authenticate, but sometimes they don't care that you're the homeowner or they don't care what house you own. They just want you to have an account. This one here didn't care about anything. They were just wide open and just had uh, basically you bring the web page up. It lists the last 20 some odd years. You can click on it and start digging into 20 years of it, information about all the permits that were submitted. And this isn't just the permit uh, contract itself. This is all the receipts that were paid for this permit. This is all the documents, the maps, the, the layouts, everything about all the uh, businesses, the houses, the properties in this county, just readily available. And it was nicely, easily searchable because they had some really nice search engine capabilities. In this case here, um, for me, one of the most interesting things I found was that they actually re released the Active Directory domain name 
and the username associated with that person who submitted this document. And I know it was Active Directory because it had the SID information there for some users as well. Uh, so generally, you don't want to you don't want to give hackers or nefarious people this kind of information just quickly. At least make them work for it a little bit. Don't just release it. Uh, so this was again a lot of fun. Uh, just digging into this. Uh, so how can you leverage this? So I look at it in two areas. Uh, from an InfoSec standpoint, uh, you can use this information uh, for social engineering engagements uh, or for phishing attacks. I mean, the more information you know about a mark, uh, the more uh, successful that you can be on those engagements. Uh, you can portray yourself as a contractor or a competing contractor. Or if you're doing a social engineering engagement, maybe you tell them, hey, I see you, you know, I heard you're building a house, or hey, I'm do I saw you're doing some work in a garage. So am I. You know, build that rapport with them. Um, now from a buyer standpoint, it gives you a better understanding of the true home value. Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, every house has a disclosure document, but sometimes they don't really disclose everything. So if you can gain access to these permit systems and these documents, you can really find out what a house is worth. A uh, quick example, a buddy of mine bought a house um, just to find out, and he did no research, uh, signed off, live, started living there, and I'm like, hey, let me go look up the GIS system for this one. Come to find out that his garage was split. Half of his garage was on his property, half of the garage was on the uh, neighbor's property. So really, who owns that garage? You know, and it, they didn't disclose it, the previous homeowners, nobody said anything to him, but that's how it's laid out in the official documents uh, for his county. So it's good to do your research. Uh, it's good to make sure you know what you're getting into. So be mindful of what information is out there. And that's one of the things that I've learned throughout uh, learning uh, the OSINT process and doing just uh, various techniques and whatnot is there's a ton of information out there. It's scary how much information is out there. You really need to dig into it and see what, what's there so that you can protect yourself a little bit better. So if you're intrigued and want to learn more about OSINT uh, in general, um, here's some a few resources for you. Uh, the OSINT re, uh, framework by Justin Nordine. It's a great source. I mean, it's just got a nice map on it, a visual map, kind of like a mind map. You just click on a topic and it just branches out. It just starts branching out into different uh, resources and it keeps it really up to date. Uh, Intel Techniques, uh, another great resource. Updated tools, it keeps it updated all the time. Some really good books about protecting your information, hiding from the internet, or just uh, using tools for OSINT. Um, uh, one of my favorite places is the OSINT Rocket Chat. Uh, if you want to chat with some folks who are doing this on a daily basis, who have the experience with this, uh, hop in there. I mean, it's free, it's easy to gain access to, and everybody there has been open and willing to share. Uh, so it's a great community. And of course, Twitter. Uh, you can just follow the hashtag OSINT. Uh, there's a lot of great people on there. Uh, sharing information, and that's one of the great things about this community, is that nobody is just hoarding the information for themselves, for them uh, to use on their engagements. They're willing to share. You, all you have to do is ask, and, and they'll give you the, the, the techniques to use. So with that, I want to thank you guys for uh, coming to the talk. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.